legacy family and friends, praying that you're well, uh, praying that you are uh, benefiting from uh, the days of staying a little more still than normal and this coinciding with what we've called Holy Week and thinking of the words and deeds of Jesus in that last and, and, and incredibly significant last week of, of his earthly ministry. We are celebrating today, the Friday of that week, a Friday that's come to be known as Good. And if you feel a little bit conflicted uh, in calling Good Friday, Good Friday, I'm, I'm with you. Because if you're acquainted with the story, you know that there is a great deal of, of pain, uh, a great deal of ugliness. Uh, we, we focus primarily on the love and the grace that was displayed there, but in the story there's an awful lot of hate toward Jesus. And especially since it's toward Jesus, one so dear, so pure, we, we talk about good, none, none has ever been so completely good. One who was nothing but good and suffered so much on that Friday. And so to call it Good Friday, we feel a little conflicted perhaps, but knowing the significance of all that happened, knowing all the fruit that was born from that Friday, we know that the good outweighs many times over all of the evil that is depicted in the gospel accounts of that Friday. We know that the good outweighs all of the sin that was handled on that Friday. And so, yes, it's right. It's, it's right that, that we would call it good. Nothing characterizes that Friday more than good. Good is the right word. But we know that there was that pain. And so, if in your celebration of Good Friday there are tears to think of the darling of heaven, Christ, sinless, glorious Jesus suffering at the hands of sinners, if, if tears roll down your face, that's, that's all right. Just so long as the goodness of it all does not escape you. We are living in curious days, and I don't need to tell you that. We are a lot more still than we normally are. We're, we're a culture that moves and goes and comes. And it's interesting how just over the last couple of weeks, uh, we've, we've canceled plane tickets. We have postponed events indefinitely. We have canceled things all together. An economy, a, a thriving economy is brought to a halt. And there must be a really good reason for doing that. We don't, we, of all people, we don't do that just on a whim or as part of a fad. No, there had to be a, a, a driving motivation behind that. And it is, as we know, to help do our part to try and slow uh, the rate of infection from this virus that is become so prevalent in our country and so that when we are at that point of wanting to go out and wanting to go about life as normal, it is hoped, it is, it is being propagated and drummed into us that we ought not, and the reason is out of care for our neighbors, that, that out of care for those who are immunocompromised or those who are more feeble or aged among us, we ought to be careful so that out of care for them, we stay put a little more. And in light of the days that we're living in and, and this very special week, I couldn't help but think how that is a very dim reflection of the love of Christ, particularly on Good Friday. Uh, our, our motives for staying put are, are mixed, for sure. It's, it's not so altruistic, not so pure that we, we all stay put and we're all being careful to limit our interactions just because we love our neighbors. Our, our motives, they fluctuate and, and they change. But, but nonetheless, it, it reminds us of one 
who for an indescribable care for others stayed put. The story says that by this point on Friday, Jesus has spent the night being tried in front of Annas and Caiaphas and Pilate and Herod and scourged and punched and spat upon and hit with reeds and mocked publicly and his brow has already been pierced by a crown of thorns and at this point he's he's already been nailed up to a tree and he's been nailed there and put on display between two thieves and a bloodthirsty crowd who came in particular to see him die. Crucifixions were not a strange sight. Crucifixions took, pl took place all the time in that area under, under Roman rule, but there was a particular crowd came out this day. It wasn't for the thieves. Thieves were seen rotting on posts all along the road outside of Jerusalem, but everyone came to see this Jesus die, and they didn't, they didn't come as indifferent spectators. They came with hearts full of things that leaked out of their mouths. Scripture says in Mark 15, And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests and the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. So coming from the crowd that stood all around the cross, and hanging next to him on his right and his left are voices that are telling him that the one great proof of him being who he claimed to be would, would be if he would come down from the cross. The, the definitive evidence of him being the Messiah, the Christ, the, the Son of God, the Savior of the world would be if he would come down from the cross. That would, that would be evidence enough for them. Interesting that even the two thieves at this point are, are mocking him and deriding him and joining with the crowd to call out against Jesus. And they join them in saying that if you would just come down, we would believe you. as though Jesus was there because he could not come down. The night before in the garden, as the mob came to take Jesus away, you'll recall that uh, Jesus' disciples are frightened and one, Peter, takes out a sword and he's about to go to war with these men, or so he thought, and Jesus tells him to sheath his sword because he doesn't need his help. What's transpiring is not happening because Jesus could not stop it. He reminds his disciples, I, I could pray to the Father and he would send 12 legions of angels and they would come and they would, they would handle the situation. This is not a, a, an issue of impotence here. He's completely able. Somewhere within the next couple of hours, the Holy Spirit comes to one of the thieves hanging by Jesus changes his heart completely and he goes from mocking and calling out for Jesus to come down as a proof of his being the Messiah and, and he cries out to Jesus in repentance and Jesus receives his mocker. It's in the 27th chapter of Matthew as well where we hear again another account of the people crying out, come down from the cross. That will settle everything. That will make everything that you said believable. 
then we will know that you are Savior if you just come down and as we know. The great goodness of Good Friday is that Jesus, he stayed put. He stayed still. Not because he had to, not because he couldn't come down. He stayed put out of the greatest love that's ever been demonstrated on earth. The greatest care for others. Not so that they wouldn't be infected, but because he knew they already were infected. Not by some coronavirus, but by that, that soul cancer that is sin. And so what they called out for as the one great proof of him being Messiah, namely his coming down for the cross, from the cross, he knew that, no. The greatest proof of him being that Messiah and caring for them and helping and saving them, the greatest proof of him being that Messiah was not coming down, but simply staying put. He stayed there. And you and I celebrate Good Friday. We, we itch for Sunday morning to celebrate the resurrection morning. We look forward to another resurrection, the kingdom come in its full, full realization. We, we look forward to all of these things because Jesus on Friday, he stayed put. And so as we stay put, let's think of his stillness on that day for you and for me and savor the goodness of Good Friday. Love you. Praying with you and for you. Soon we'll get together and we'll take a cup and we'll take some bread and we'll, we'll celebrate this further. Happy Good Friday.